Hi people, this is just a short video just sharing a few of the things that um, are on the horizon as a hard Brexit looms. The hard Brexit that apparently half the British public support. I don't believe that half the British support, half the British public does support Brexit now. I think having since been fully informed about all the implications and consequences at least half of the people who voted Brexit no longer support well they regret their vote you know because they were misinformed and they were lied to and persuaded and manipulated by hateful rhetoric a lot of it fear mongering fear mongering well what's going to happen what I'm sharing here is not fear mongering now I could have shared I did actually warn people about this exactly this before but I didn't do it to such a degree I was fear mongering people that anybody could have accused me of fear mongering okay but this is reality and we are talking about a serious threat here to our food supply uh, one government minister suggested giving all the British public a sum of money as part of the pull out from Europe as as part of Brexit. Um, and look, they, these include a clear integrated plan for UK food, new legislation to replace 4,000 pieces of EU law relating to food and subsidies cover the EU's common agricultural pol policy, which the UK is expected to leave. You know, the food that they will be bringing in, it will come from America, it will include um, pesticides that are, and hormones that are banned in the EU, okay, they're prohibited in the EU. These are things that now are going to be imported into Britain and you will be paying at least twice as much for them. That is, and that's actually a mean estimate, that's a mean estimate. So please, please understand. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, food, food and medicines are two of the most important things that people rely on daily. And anything that threatens those is a threat to the stability of our society. Now, Venezuela, under suffering and struggling under severe sanctions, has left empty shelves in supermarkets and essentially that is what Britain has voted for to place sanctions on ourselves okay or pay the extortionate prices now France has already said that it's going to there's going to be no free pass now for food transport vehicles as they were e easily able to pass through the EU before and bring things so there's going to be there is going to be a huge wage losses now in people who were working in the transport industry in uh, haulage and it is it is very 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 serious I mean they're talking about um, wartime contingencies It's it it is it is very 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 serious, you know. It's uh, the prospect of crippling food shortages and ration books forms no part of a credible policy agenda in 2018. And David Lamy, he said, I have always said Brexit is the most destructive peacetime policy in this country's history. But now we are introducing a position that has only ever been previously introduced in wartime and that is exactly what they are doing. They are drawing up secret plans to stockpile processed foods in the event of Britain leaving the EU without a de deal and Nicola Surgeon has condemned that move. Um, this news actually, that would have made most people across the UK really stop in their tracks but as I say, you were warned people, you know, myself and other people were warning people, but obviously we're fear mongering, you know, and this is it, 
Now, how are people going to feel when there's food rationing? When you get your ration book? And I do fear that, you know, there will be very angry people, and especially the people who voted to remain in the EU, are going to be very, very angry indeed. And I, I, I do fear a threat of civil war in Britain, because people, at the end of the day, what, what has Brexit actually delivered to Britain? What has it actually given us? I, I can't see one single thing apart from he has gone from strength to strength. That's it. The hard right. The hard right has been given a voice and a movement and a power base, actually, in Britain. I mean, there he are, is now off on a one million US speaking tour. He spent his few days in prison. I've got friends in prison who've spoken out against police failures to investigate children's crime reports, okay? I've got friends who are on lifetime bans from speaking about it. No, nobody hears about them. They don't get invited onto new BBC Newsnight. They do not get invited to a parliamentary dinner that he did very recently. So what has it delivered apart from freedom to hate and freedom to express that hate? Nothing, because we're not going, going to be independent, are we? It's like a child, isn't it, packing his bag and saying, right, I'm leaving home. I'm going to be independent. Go on then, go out there in the big bad world. Be independent. What are you going to eat? What are you going to, how are you going to live? What are you going to do if you get ill and need medicines? There's a lot more to life than being scared of xenophobic, you know, there's a lot more to life than xenophobic fears about Muslims and immigrants. And as I've explained in one of my previous videos, which I'll leave the link to it under this, it's not going to stop immigrants. The immigrants will still be coming in. It's just that they'll be better paid immigrants. That's all the corporations, you know, like um, DynCorp, for example, that are based in Britain, uh, they're free to bring in as many staff as they like, from wherever they like. And it doesn't matter if, if they've got a criminal record, as long as it's spent. So as long as they've done the stint in prison, that's okay. You know, people who've been engaged in military actions in the Middle East, security firms, corporate police, we're talking about a corporate, a corporatised Britain and we will be under those corporate rules. As I've been explaining to people, the EU protects us from those corporate rules. The corporations are only allowed to impose rules on us that do not infringe our basic rights, our human rights, our workers' rights, our environmental protection rights, our children's rights. But now we've left that, then that's it, so we have no rights. The government wants to scrap all of those rights and that's why the Brexit deal talks have failed because they want to scrap even the rights of workers on a zero hour contract. Now, how many people who were on a zero-hour contract voted Brexit? So, are you going to be happy to know that actually all the rights, the very few rights that you have right now as a zero-hour contract employee, are you happy that you are now going to be robbed of all those rights? Okay, does that make you happy to know that, well, all right, I'll sacrifice my rights, I'll sacrifice my food, I'll sacrifice my medicines, because, you know, at least I've stopped all these Muslims coming in, in into the country and imposing Sharia law, which was never going to happen anyway, because most of the Muslims in this country do not want to live by Sharia law. They're British people. They've been born here, most of them. And there are other ways of dealing with immigration than chopping off our leg, okay? And that's exactly what we've done. You know, we have actually declared war on ourselves. There you go.
David Lammy has likened Brexit to declaring war on ourselves after it was revealed plans are being drawn up to charter ships to bring in emergency food and medicines in the event of a no deal. The Department of Transport has put in place contingency plans to own or lease roll-on, roll-off lorry ferries to make sure vital supplies of goods, food and medicines continue to reach these shores if the UK leaves the EU without a deal. Politicians from across the broad board expressed their disbelief as they heard a possible French decision to reintroduce customs checks could reduce freight coming into the UK by Dover and the Channel Tullen tunnel by around 85%. So, you know, this this is, uh, it's the kind of stuff, you know, the options being examined under the plan include buying ships, leasing them or converting military vessels. It's the kind of stuff governments do in time of war. It is as serious as that. That's what another cabinet minister said. So, you know, we are talking some serious, serious stuff here and uh, people will be getting very angry and you know here we have the EU as proposes a, well it's bans sing, single use plastics this is the kind of thing really that is on that is under attack this is what the corporate world does not like about the EU it does not like the fact that it makes policies like this. It does not like the fact that EU gives its workers rights, that it upholds human rights and establishes child protection protocols, that it, it gives animal rights. It curbs, it curbs the freedoms of the corporate interests. And now Britain has left the EU, we are going to be fully under the thumb of the global corporations that have already taken over Britain and that was my concern. I'd be quite happy to leave the EU and be part of a Britain that up, nonetheless upheld all the laws and rights and protocols that protect our children, protect the environment, protect the worker, protect the human, okay? I'd be quite happy to be independent, to set up our own industries and grow our own food and become as self-sufficient as possible. If, if, if we'd already established all of that and decided, well, actually, we can live independently, I don't need to live to be part of this uh, for whatever reason, you know, uh, we're going to be independent. And at the time Britain joined EU, that's exactly what Britain was. We were an independent nation, we had our own industries, we grew our own food, you know, and imported stuff from the Commonwealth. The, these, the, this, this was a Britain that entered the EU. The Britain that is leaving the EU has got nothing. We, all our jobs, industries, everything, the vast majority of it is through global corporations who've taken over everything, including our public services. You know, they're even making a profit out of our benefit service, which is the most disgusting thing when you look at the amount of homeless people absolutely destitute on the streets. I mean, I was in the town centre yesterday and there were, guys, there were so many homeless people just sitting around and guys walking around with big black bags, of a group of people, handing them out food, giving them clean sleeping bags, clean clothing, you know, this this really is a war. We are at war. There has been a war against the people of Britain from our government and now they've extended that war to the extent they've pulled us out of the EU purely on behalf of corporate interests and, you know, the British people a lot of them have been bamboozled by this Cambridge Analytica um, campaign, which, you know, they were hired by the Tories. The Tories formed the bulk of the organisers of Vote Leave and they hired Cambridge Analytica specifically to scaremonger British people into voting for something that is so detrimental to our, to our country. And I, I, I'll leave another video link under this. You know, British youth are terrified and I don't blame them. Of course they're terrified. I'm terrified at, 
of thinking that, gosh, we're going to be in a country with no human rights. After what men like my grandfather gave their lives for, what my ancestors struggled and suffered through two world wars for, what for us to come back to a state of rationing. This, this is going, this is, the people of Britain are already very, very stressed and depressed. It's a fact. I, 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 I go out into the city and see the pe people do not look happy. People look worried. That's the truth of it. People look worried. And I, I'm very, 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 very concerned. I feel that I've, I've made a video to EU Parliament explaining, you know, asking them to stand by the British people now that do want to remain, that do not want this now. Now we're fully, now people are waking up to the reality of it because really I don't understand how the EU Parliament could have had any dealings whatsoever with this government, this Tory government, coalition government, when that, that government has stated an intention to scrap our human rights because that in itself is illegal, you know? That is illegal. Even according to the United Nations, no government has a right. Once they've accepted those rights, no government has a right to express an intention to scrap them. That is a threat against us, against the people. Now, I don't care what you think about immigrants, you know, the fact is, Sharia law could never, ever be implemented in a country that has human rights. That's the fact of it. So, you know, the thing that was actually there to prevent something like Sharia law ever being implemented is, is going. And the fact is that we could have Sharia law or even more draconian laws by whatever government gets in, which now there's room for a far-right extremist government to get in, what, with no human rights? Well, expect the worst, you know? Expect the worst. So, people have, have literally been persuaded to vote against ourselves. That is what has happened, and that is what criminals do that's what abusers do i know i've survived abuse i've survived abuse okay and that is what they do they th the impact of it it causes people to self-harm it is a common thing among people who've been abused that they self-harm and now the abused people of britain are self-harming and of course they were upset about immigrants when they've got no jobs when they've got no homes when they're on long queues of the NHS it's very easy for a corporate intelligence agency to come along and inform them that well the reason for all of that is because all these immigrants have come in and you better watch out because they're going to be sending hordes of Muslims in to rape you women and your children and impose Sharia law on you when the fact is, if you go onto YouTube, have a look at the pedo hunter videos and see how many white people there are, white men, and even some women involved in, in child abuse. And they're just the ones that get picked up by the pedo hunters. Never mind the ones that are out there, the high profile people in groups, gangs and groups. So it's, you know, the the concerns are very, very, very serious. Now, Britain's not going to be part of this. We're not going to ban single-use plastic, are we? Because we're out of the EU. Corporations give the British government a pat on the head, but they're not there for us. And, you know, as I've explained, basically the government has told corporations like DynCorp, that is established in Britain, that they can bring in really as many staff as they want from abroad as long as they're paying them over 30k a year so that means who is going to get the jobs of under 30k a year british people we're going to get the cheapo jobs aren't they and with no workers rights and who's going to be running our country basically foreigners and when you're giving foreigners 
from anywhere in the world, mercenary soldiers, mercenary soldiers, soldiers who work for money, okay, they don't, they aren't uh, defending principles of human rights, protecting people, they, basically, where do you need me, I, give, give, give me the money and I will go. And, you know, it is so, so serious. Nobody really is listening to me. And, you know, after I've... I am quite disturbed as well, because after I've shared my recent videos about the EU and a couple of other videos that I've made, and I've shared them in a few groups on Facebook and on my own Facebook, and today, suddenly, I'm restricted from posting in groups, you know. Apparently, my videos are so offensive, I'm restricted from posting in groups. And, you know, I'd actually only just got on my Facebook after a three-month ban because I used the F word in a poem, okay? And it was a poem, ex well, it was an expression. It, I was utilising my freedom of speech and expression to express my, um, this you know, to express the situation of just how many paedophiles operating in groups are in Britain and what kind of professions they're, they're involved in. You know, we're not talking about men in dirty raincoats or immigrants. We're talking about organised professional people who get together and abuse their professional powers in order to commit crimes against children, to cover up crimes against children, and actually to maliciously prosecute anybody who's asking questions about that and then gag them or even imprison them and you know to me that is really really serious um, nobody seems to be bothered about it apparently we protected our children by stopping Muslim immigrants well I'm sorry actually when you look at the real situation and believe you me I have researched it extensively. The vast majority of the children that are being abused by gangs and groups in Britain, the Asians actually form a minority. That's the fact of it. They do. And even those Asian groups ha have been protected by the establishment because they are providing children to non-Asian people as well. So I, I, am, I am really, really concerned about all of this now. And I think, you know, the idea of rationing, you know, I mean, UK Column, I mean, they do some good work. I'm not knocking them totally here, but I do find this a bit xenophobic about all oh, Britain still joining the, the military, EU military. What? I'm sorry, what, when we've got Dine Corp? Why, why aren't they asking questions about this? And the fact that they could they could literally bring a foreign army into Britain to control British people when it really starts kicking off, when they start removing our human rights and they've removed all our workers' rights and we're all on ration books. I, I, I am very, 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 very concerned and I think the British people do need to really wake up now. And I have, I have made a video which I've sent to the EU Parliament and various EU members um, uh, asking for a second referendum and that the EU insists that actually Brexit deals and talks are going to cease until Britain has a second referendum. And no, we do not want to then enter the EU as a new member because the British people are a victim of crime. This Tory government has committed crimes against humanity. That's the fact of it. They've done it in Britain and abroad. When 120,000 people have died through austerity, that is serious. Don't talk to me about the threat of immigrants and Muslims because 120,000 people is a lot of people and the people throughout Britain who've lost family members directly because of austerity, you know it. We know it. Okay? And... Um, no, you know, when we're facing a wartime situation, that is, that, that isn't what we voted for, is it? That, 
this everything that's happening has exposed the lie it's exposed the lie hasn't it because this is what we are facing and it's exactly this that has caused such trouble in Venezuela okay which again you know that's not the fault of the Venezuelan government and people that's the fault of the uh, sanctions that have been imposed against Venezuela because the people have actually voted for a government that upholds their human rights okay that's the basic gist of what's going on in Venezuela and people are very angry uh, that oh my gosh because of this government look we've had all our food you know in Venezuela they're basically fighting to have human rights removed so they can get food back on 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 the shelves in Britain we're in the ridiculous situation where we've actually voted to lose our human rights in order to have no food on the shelves so that is how ridiculous the situation is because as I say Venezuela the people have voted a government that upholds their human rights and as a result of that the world has been uh, put the corporate world has put sanctions on them so they can't import food and goods from abroad because they voted for human rights basically here in Britain we've decided to stick with the government to leave the EU and stick with a government that wants to scrap our human rights and because we've done that we are going to be en end up in a situation of having no food on our shelves and not enough medicines for our NHS how ridiculous is that and I, I, I would like anybody who voted for Brexit to just tell me one one positive thing that has come out of it just one just tell me one positive thing apart from we've gained our independence independence to do what exactly what what independence when we're being controlled by corporations when now we're out of the EU we've got to live by corporate rules people are being told at work that they can't even get have a toilet break I know, I know people that are working in offices where they are not allowed to even get up to go to the toilet. They're not allowed to get up to go and get a coffee. This is office workers. And this is happening now, all, already. Even, even knowing that at the moment we've still got these EU, EU laws, but they know we're out of the EU. Nobody's going to enforce enforce it now people on zero hour contracts are being told they can't have a break people have been fired for taking their lawful right to a break because it's like look we're going out the EU no go away we don't need yeah all right you might have that right now but it's going going gone go and find a lawyer who who will support you well you can't can can you because nobody can afford legal help now can they now there's no legal aid and with zero hour contract workers being the lowest paid workers often then you know there's there's nothing there and I'm sorry Britain you know I know it's hard if people uh, feel wrong you know that yes you voted wrong um, but you know um, this isn't about oh you were wrong and I was right and gloating and all that this isn't about that this is about I, I care about your rights as well even the Brexit voters I don't feel hatred towards you I, I, I do feel very very concerned for you and your families as much as I do for the people who voted to remain in the EU and you know that that is why I'm making my videos I, I'm not making my video to attack people or to attack the people that voted Brexit I fully fully understand why people were persuaded to do that and the kind of fears and the xenophobia that was all part of that and that people fell victim to as a survivor I understand how easy it is for people who have suffered severe abuse of austerity for so long can can be easily manipulated and persuaded and so, you know, here I am, a survivor, um, helping people to come out of that and to, start, you know, to really stand up now for our rights. And as I said before, it's going to take not just 700,000 people in London. I think we're going to have to have those kind of numbers 
in every city throughout the UK now demanding another referendum. Um, so uh, thank you for taking time to listen. Uh, this, you know, we, we are literally facing a crisis here. So thank you and love and God bless to all.